Hi, I'm Jackie Stapleton and welcome to Atoll TV. If you've made it here, it means that you might just love ISO standards as much as me and you are truly interested and possibly even excited about learning more about them. Well, you've come to the right place. In this video, I'm going to cover clause 8.2, Emergency Preparedness and Response. I'm going to break this clause down and turn it into something you can all understand. You'll then be able to apply this to your own organization system and understand what the requirements will look like for you. No more guessing. Keep on watching as I can show you just how easy this is. Okay, let's get started. Let's take a look at what clause 8.2 wants us to do. First off, the clause states that the organization shall establish, implement, and maintain the processes needed to prepare for and respond to potential emergency situations as identified in 611. The organization shall A, prepare to respond to prevent or mitigate adverse environmental impacts from emergency situations. Let's stop there for a bit and understand what is needed so far. We need to understand what our potential emergency situations are and prepare for them so that we can respond adequately. We need to have a planned response to these emergency situations. So how do we know what the potential emergency situations are? Well, luckily, earlier on in Clause 6.1, Actions to Address Risks and Opportunities, it states that the potential emergency situations, including those that can have an environmental impact, are to be determined. So we should already have an idea what our potential emergency situations are, and of course, Part of our action to manage these is to establish planned responses. These planned responses can include these further points in this clause of B, respond to actual emergency situations. C, take action to prevent or mitigate the consequences of emergency situations appropriate to the magnitude of the emergency and the potential environmental impact. D, periodically test the planned response actions where practicable. This means that once we have established our planned responses, we need to conduct tests or drills on the response processes. You might choose to do a run through of the response based on a scenario, or you could do a desktop review. By testing the response processes, you'll be able to obtain feedback from everyone involved in the testing and therefore your response to an actual emergency situation should run smoother and people involved will be well practiced and prepared. As part of our response to an environmental emergency, we should deal with the consequences first. This might be containing a spill or isolating a work area all depending on what the situation is, of course. I used to audit a civil construction company. I audited them for about nine years. They regularly tested their emergency response to chemical spills. For chemical spills in waterways, they used a harmless dye or it was a food coloring, and they used a contained pond that they had at their own workshop location. So the test was in a controlled environment. If you aren't able to conduct field drills like this, you can always conduct desktop exercises, which is about simulating potential emergency situations with relevant parties, including employees, contractors, visitors, and emergency responders to test their knowledge and understanding of the response procedures. These can be conducted in a meeting room or office, and involved simply discussing hypothetical scenarios and responses. Now that we've established these response processes and are responding and testing, this clause moves on to state, 
E, periodically review and revise the processes and plan response actions, in particular after the occurrence of emergency situations or tests, and F, provide relevant information and training related to emergency preparedness and response as appropriate to relevant interested parties, including persons working under its control. So when you are testing your response processes, you should be reviewing what went well and where the response processes could be improved. This also applies in the event of an actual emergency that has occurred. And don't forget that part of involving interested parties in the testing of response includes providing the relevant training. Then the final statement of this clause is, the organization shall maintain documented information to the extent necessary to have confidence that the processes are carried out as planned. The words maintain documented information mean that our planned responses should be documented. What we have to do should be written down somewhere so we can access it and follow it when we need to. This clause doesn't state to retain documented information. However, it may be beneficial to retain evidence of training, testing and emergency responses so that you do have records of following the response procedures and improvements as a result of this. It's pretty simple once you break it down like that. Now that I've explained all of these requirements, can you see more clearly how you could action and demonstrate these requirements in your own management system? Thank you so much for joining me. Clearly you are truly dedicated to learning more about ISO standards. I love having you learn with me and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Auditor Training Online is a recognized training provider and we know how it works in the real world. So we are confident that we can help you to make a change in your life and join the most sought after profession out there. Go to our website and enroll in our training to transform your work and industry experience into a recognized qualification and career. And also, don't forget to subscribe to Atoll TV and leave a comment or question as I truly do want to help you to join the best career out there with me.